Hello and welcome to this Beyond Shakespeare exploring session and today we are looking at a Yorkshire tragedy by Fight Amongst Yourselves, We're Not Getting Involved. Um, no, to be serious, um, it has been reasonably well uh, uh, attributed to Thomas Middleton, but there are people who will happily debate uh, who certain parts of the text are written by. If you would like to engage in such activity, um, then please do go on the internet where all things are possible. Uh, Yorkshire Tragedy was written sometime around 1605 uh, onwards. It is based on a true story and was printed a couple of years later. Um, it is not a long play. It is uh, part of a combined uh, evening of entertainment, uh, uh, four plays in one, uh, of which this is a one actor. And as such, we may feel that this is a very modern play and that it uh, really has uh, a lot of resonances with, say, more uh, fr fringe theatre, studio theatre uh, type activity. But it was designed for the big public stages as a, as a, uh, a part of a, a longer entertainment. Um, that's all I'm really wanting to say about the text at this stage, um, because as I say I want to find out how this play ticks and find out how it works uh, uh, as a piece of drama. And luckily I have a wonderful team of people who are going to be reading this with me today. So we're just going to go around the room. Um, there are a oh, host of people, which who do I start with? I don't know. Uh, let's start with playing a Sam, a the master, uh, the son, and probably various spare gentlemen and servants. It is the invisible. Hayden McCabe. Hello, good evening. Uh, I'm Hayden McCabe and I live in Suffolk in the UK. And playing uh, 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 Oliver, uh, Gentleman 2, and potentially other other uh, characters as well is um hi my name's eloise spring and i am an actor based in london and playing the wife we have no name it is but wife is <laughs> hello i'm sasha cooper and i'm an actress all-round performer director writer and loads more besides based in the uk in brighton the only thing is my Yorkshire accent is absolutely appalling, so I'm not even going to attempt it. And there is an interesting question where a whether a London-based theatre oh. would even attempt it themselves as well. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make some decisions as we go as to what's the best options for accent work here. And playing Ralph and servant number one, and probably some spare gentlemen, is... Hi, uh, uh, my name is Simon Nader and I'm based in Hertfordshire and I do all of the creative stuff just like the rest of the guys. Looking forward to murdering some Yorkshire accents. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> ah, someone's going to dive in. Marvellous. And playing <laughs> the husband in this tragedy is... Hi, I'm Liza Graham. I'm an actor and singer in London. Um, and I am probably not going to attempt the accent either. In my experience, you can either do an accent well or read well, but not both. <laughs> <laughs> ah, a mission statement for our performances this evening. Um, and uh, reading a gentleman for and uh, a knight, a, a magistrate, is... Uh, hello, I'm Joseph. I'm a writer and actor based in Oxfordshire. And uh, and uh, I think l last, if I have not missed anybody out, uh, but certainly not least, new to this little forum, playing the maid and uh, additional parts is... Liz. Hi, I'm Liz from North Devon. I've just suddenly <laughs> just realised I might have to do a Yorkshire accent. I'll try it. I might massacre <laughs> it. I'll, I'll give it a go. Ah, <laughs> uh, so many decisions already being thrown into the room, uh, which is delightful. And I am, as I always forget to introduce myself, I am Robert Crichton, and I am reading the stage directions and generally trying to uh, moderate the, uh, the room and seeing how we go. So we will begin with scene one, which is a traditional place to start. And uh, the only information we have in terms of stage directions are Enter Oliver and Ralph, two serving men. 
Sir Ralph, my young mistress is in such a pitiful, passionate humour for the long absence of her love. Why? Can you blame her? Why? Apples hanging longer on the tree than when they are ripe make so many fallings. These mad wenches, because they are not gathered in time, are fain to drop of themselves. And then tis common, you know, for every man to take him up. Mass, thou sayest true. Tis common indeed. But, sir, it's neither our young mister uh, returned, nor our fellow Sam come from London. Neither of either, as the Puritan board says. Slid, I hear Sam. Sam's call me ears. Taddy, call me Faith. Now me nose itches for news. And so does mine elbow. Where are you, where are you there? Enter Sam, furnished with things from London some point during this address. Boy, look you walk my horse with discretion. I have him read simply. I warrant his skin sticks to his back with a hefty heat. If I should catch cold and get the, the get the puff of lungs, I were well served, were I not? What, Ralph and Oliver? Honest, Honest fellow Ralph. Sam. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> if if. <laughs> what tricks hast thou bought from London? Oh, you, you see, I am and after the truest fashion. Three hats and two glasses, bobbing upon them. Three hats and two glasses, bobbing upon them. Uh, two uh, ribato wires upon my breast, a cap case by my side, a brush at me back, an almanac in my pocket, and three ballots in my copies. Nay, yeah, <laughs> I am the true picture of a common serving man. I'll swear thou art. Thou mayst set up when thou wilt. There's many a one begins with less, I can tell thee, that proves a rich man ere he dies. But what's the news from London, Sam? Aye, that's well said. What's the news from London, Sirrah? My young mistress keeps such a puling for her love. Why, the more fool she. Aye, the more ninny hammer she. Why, <laughs> Sam? Why? Why, he's, he's married to another long ago. And that is, Ambo is both again. Oh, Sorry, oh. so that's a, a, an archaic stage direction there. <laughs> Sam, give him uh, why he's married to another long ago, please. Why, he's married to another long ago. If faith ye yes. Yes. Why? Did you not know that till now? Why, he's married, beats his wife, and has two or three children by her. Oh, for you must know that any woman bears the more when she is a beaten. Aye, that's true, for she bears the blows. Sir Sam, I would not for two years' wages. My young mistress knew so much. She'd run upon the left hand of her wits, ne'er be her own woman again. And I think she were blessed in her cradle that he never came in her bed. Why, he has consumed all, pawned his lands and made his university brother stand in wax for him. Oh, that's a fine phrase for a frivolous chair. Two years more than his skin's worth. It's possible. Nay, I'll tell you moreover, he calls his wife or as familiarly as one would call Mal and Dog, and his children bastards as naturally <laughs> as can be. Oh, but what have we here? I thought I was somewhat pulled down me breeches. I quite forgot my two potting sticks. <laughs> They came from London, and now anything is good here that comes from London. Aye, far-fetched, you know. Oh, but speak in your conscience. You say, have not we as good buying sticks in country as need to be in fire? For oh, the mind of things all, and as thou saidest, he now far-fetches the best things that ladies. Aye. And for waiting, gentlewomen too. But, Ralph, 
What is our beer sour this Sunday? No, no, it holds countenance yet. Why then, follow me. I'll teach you the finest humour to be drunk in. <laughs> they call it nighting in London when they drink upon their knees. Fair Excellent. That's... I give you all the degrees into order, etc., etc. <laughs> yes, uh, and there we pause. Uh, just a note uh, for Eloise. Um, I think you don't have headphones on, so when anyone else is talking, your sound will be cutting out. So that's why when we're doing both, um, uh, we can't hear you speaking. We just hear uh, Simon. Okay. Just uh, that's just a note. I don't think we're going to have a similar problem in the future. It's just that, that we do we do cut out on that. Lots of things there because, of course, we're going to be really heavily invested in Oliver, Ralph, and Sam for the rest uh, rest of this evening. Um, <laughs> uh, so there's uh, there are a few interesting textual things. Um, it's it's down in this text as Ralph. It's probably uh, pronounced Rafe, um, mm. uh, uh, and and probably should be uh, adjusted to be uh, spelt that yeah. way. Um, <clears throat> there's there's interesting things like uh, talking about uh, because it's thundered the idea that the beer will have turned sour. Um, uh, that's that's an interesting uh, thing that I've I've not come across before. Um, the two potting sticks, I think they're crimping irons or something for um, for uh, working uh, uh, materials. So uh, obviously, having returned from his journey to to London, he's got all sorts of things he can do sexual innuendos with, and I'm sure. Sam is full of them, and he'll give you as many of those as he can. Um, yeah, a good reference here. That there's a lute song that you should listen to called Would You Buy a Fine Dog, uh, which lists a lot of things that you might get from a peddler, which are also sexual innuendos, many of them uh, here, rubatos, uh, potting sticks. Robert, over to you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but I, I, I think in terms of throwing it to the room, um, we're getting things which I'm, I'm suggesting uh, may be themes in the play to come, um, especially as Sam is, is discussing um, uh, what their, his master and uh, mistress uh, uh, say and do to each other and, um, you know, and uh, eliciting uh, 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 some, some, some response from the audience uh, that seems to be designed to be comic, you know, that... Um, he calls his children bastards as natural as can be. And, um, and there's a question of tone in this, this particular play. Um, any thoughts in the room about what you've heard so far as a play? Well, I thought the, um, the part about if you beat your, your wife, then she's better at bearing children. I thought that was a particularly nasty moment. Mm. Yeah, that's the one that stuck out as well. That's pretty unpleasant. Yeah, it seems to be that that's, that's quite um, um, well held by the general public, or the, the, the males of the general public anyway. That it seems really strange. It, it seems to be something that men are perfectly happy to joke about, yeah, and, and, it, yeah. and, and it does sound like something that we've heard elsewhere. Um, uh, mm. Thoughts about the tone, perhaps, of what these, these men are doing? Because it's, it's an interesting episode of Top Gear so far. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Tone, it, tone, this, it's mm. only, sorry, go ahead. No. Whoever was talking now. No, that no sorry. I, yeah, it's okay. I was just going to say when you say that it seemed that men seem to be quite. It was something they're quite proud of. At the same time, they do say that the person who has been forsaken um, has got off lightly yeah. by not yeah. ending up being married to this man. Mm -hmm. So they're aware that she she got uh, got away. Yeah in time basically even mm. though she's going to be upset about it yeah. Yeah. as far as i know this plot point doesn't come up again the the idea of that there's someone else that's in love with the husband mm. there's um there, mm. i think there's quite a lot about this scene which will not come up uh, come mm. up again uh, mm. later um mm. uh, but i think we'll address that a little later as as we go i think um simon you you were a mid, mid flow um, I, I was just, I was just going to say, uh, yeah, tonally, seeing as uh, that was brought up, it's, it's kind of not quite preparing people for the horror to come, uh, which is interesting because it starts off obviously with with a little bit of light relief until you get to the casual wife beating, uh, and then if you think that's bad, 
Um, it's a bit like yesterday. We're going to flip it in a little bit. So it's yeah. an interesting little setup, uh, mm. possibly as a as a device, possibly to make people feel worse for the wife later. Yes, because if you elicit an audience response of laughing about uh, casual wife beating uh, mm. at the top of the play, and then you make them feel really, really awkward and uncomfortable later, that is a that is a technique that is is used. Um, uh, I think, however, we will leave uh, Sam. Oliver and Rafe for the moment, unless anyone has any additional thoughts at this time. We're going to move to scene two, where we are introduced to the otherwise nameless husband and wife combo. And we will carry on until uh, additional entrances, and then we'll figure out what ha is happening with the gentleman. So husband and wife, enter wife. I, I'll try a Yorkshire accent, but if it goes wrong, I'll start again. What will become of us? All with a way. Me husband never ceases in expense. No, that's just not working. I'll do it normal then. Hold on. What will become of us? All with a way. My husband never ceases in expense, both to consume his credit and his house, and to set down by heaven's just decree that riot's child needs must be beggary. Are these the virtues that his you did promise? Dice and voluptuous meetings, midnight revels, taking his bed with surfeits, ill perceiving the ancient honour of his house and name, and this not all, but that which kills me most. When he recounts his losses and false fortunes, the weakness of his state so much dejected, not as a man repentant, but half mad, his fortunes cannot answer his expense. He sits and sullenly locks up his arms, forgetting heaven looks downward, which makes him appear so dreadful that he frights my heart, walks heavily as if his soul were earth, not penitent for those his sins are past, but vexed his money cannot make them last. A fearful melancholy, ungodly sorrow. Oh, yonder he comes. Now in despite of ills, I'll speak to him. And I will hear him speak and do my best to drive it from his heart. Enter husband. Pox on the last throw. It made 500 angels vanish from my sight. I'm damned, I'm damned, the angels have forsook me. Nay, it is certainly true, for he that has no coin is damned in this world. He's gone, he's gone. Dear husband. Oh, most punishment of all, I have a wife. I do entreat you as you love your soul. Tell me the cause of this your discontent. A vengeance strip thee naked. Thou art cause. Effect, quality, property. Thou, thou, thou. That turned to worse. Both beggary of the soul as of the body. And so much unlike himself at first. As if some vexed spirit had got his form upon him. And the husband, having exited, re-enters. He comes again. He says I am the cause. I never yet spoke less than words of duty and of love. If marriage be honourable, then cuckolds are honourable, for they cannot be made without marriage. Fool, what meant I to marry to get beggars? Now must my eldest son be a knave or nothing. He cannot live upon the fool, for he will have no land to maintain him. That mortgage sits like a snaffle upon mine inheritance and makes me chaw upon iron. My second son must be a promoter, my third a thief, or an underputter, a slave pander. Oh, beggary, beggary, to what base uses dost thou put a man? I think the devil scorns to be a bawd. He bears himself more proudly, has more care on's credit. Base, slavish, abject, filthy poverty. Good sir, by all our vows, I do beseech you, show me the true cause of your discontent. Money. Money, money, and thou must supply me. Oh, alas, I am the less cause of your discontent. Yet what is mine, either in rings or jewels, use to your own desire, but I beseech you, as ye are a gentleman by many bloods, though I myself be out of your respect, think on the state of these three lovely boys you have been father to. Ha! Bastards. 
Bastards, bastards, begotten tricks, begotten tricks. Heaven knows how these words wrong me. But I may endure these griefs a monster thousand more. Oh, call to mind your lands already mortgage, your self wound with debts, your hopeful brother at the university in bonds for you, like to be seized upon. Have and... done now, harlot, whom though for fashion's sake I married, I never could abide. Think'st thou thy words shall kill my pleasures? Fall off to thy friends, thou and thy bastards beg. I will not bait a wit in humour. Midnight still I love you and revel in your company. Curbed in shall it be said in all societies that I broke custom, that I flagged in money. No, those thy jewels I will play as freely as when my state was fullest. Be it so. Nay, I protest and take that for an earnest. <laughs> and he, the stage direction says he spurns her. I will forever hold thee in contempt, and never touch the sheets that cover thee, but be divorced in bed till thou consent, thy dowry shall be sold to give new life unto those pleasures which I most affect. Sir, do but turn a gentle eye on me, and what the law shall give me leave to do, you shall command. Look it be done. Shall I want dust and like a slave wear nothing in my pockets but my hands to fill them up with nails holding his hands in his pockets oh much against my blood let it be done i was never made to be a looker on a board to dice i'll shake the drabs myself and make him yield i say look it be done i take my leave it shall speedily speedily i hate the very hour i chose a wife trouble trouble three Children like three evils hang upon me. Fie, 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 strumpet and bastards, strumpet and bastards. And we will pause there and take a breath. Um, so much there. Um, the uh, advantage of a one act uh, play is it gets straight to business. The disadvantage um, is it may uh, take some shortcuts perhaps in terms of character and and things um there's lots going on that here with what the wife is doing and what the husband is doing um let's go to the wife first thoughts from the wife and then thoughts from the roof a room about the wife Ooh, okay um abused subservient and absolutely determined to get some answers out of the husband, even though she knows full well she's not going to get, you know, too much of a straight answer. Uh, I think, um, I think she's in a very tricky position. Um, you know, if I was to look at it from my modern eye perspective, I'd tell her to get out of there now. I really would. Um, but obviously, being that character, it's a completely different scenario because and I can resonate with her actually, having been in an abused relationship myself for seven years, not physically, but emotionally, what you're seeing there is actually a double whammy. It's both physical and emotional punishment just for existing. And unless, I mean, again, speaking from a modernist perspective, I hope in many ways she finds her power to leave or at least something happens that will put her out of her misery. I, I really do, because I'm actually feeling for her. And I want to literally say to her, get out, get out. <laughs> mm. Absolutely. And and um, even, even then, I'm sure there's people in the audience saying, get out, get out, get out, in some fashion. Um, or uh, uh, there. What are the thoughts in the room then about the wife specifically at this stage, though you can digress? Can I just say, he says to her, I will forever hold thee in contempt and never touch the sheets that cover thee, but be divorced in bed till thou consent. You would think that she might just say, great, do that. She doesn't. Don't share my bed. Mm. But she doesn't. She just goes along with it. It's, mm. uh, yeah. She's yeah. Mm. Uh, other, other thoughts in, in, yeah. in the room? Uh, or do you want to move? Uh, think, uh, talk about how the the husband is depicted. Perhaps um, uh, there's 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 a very different 
I think almost a very different style for the husband as well, um, in terms of how it's how it's written and what it's uh, it's showing us. Because um, you know, he starts off with this sort of wordplay about you know losing his money, losing his angels, and that the angels have forsook him, and that he's uh, he feels he's being unlucky uh, in money. Um, and uh, that is all of his uh, problems, and he's going to put them on his wife. But I, is money the real cause of this? Well, what we're given, he has a gambling addiction. Mm. Um, but there's also something the wife says when he's not there. She says, um, so much unlike himself at first, as if some vexed spirit had got his form upon him. So it's not just. Um, it's it's maybe not just a gambling addiction, but some kind of of break, you know. Mm. Yeah, that's a that is a foreshadowing of something coming. Yeah, he, coming he does later go is, properly uh... deluded later. Not not mad in the conventions of Elizabethan theater necessarily, but he does mad things. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and maybe it's also, well, it's sort of potentially at least plants a seed in the audience's head that um, he wasn't always like this, as in, because otherwise it just seems completely, uh, I know it's a completely, a very different time, but otherwise, um, you know, it, it would just seem too much like, you know, why on earth would she have ever um, been with him in the first time, but in the first place? Mm. Well, mm. People, uh, they're, they're gentry, and people of that status didn't marry necessarily of their own choice. No, I, yeah, a different, a different time, I know, but... But, but even, even uh, within our modern context, you know, people, people um, do, do marry or get, get into relationships which, you know, are, are, are not going to work or, uh, or are, are ill-matched in, in certain ways. Uh, was there a mention of his drinking as well and uh, uh, Midnight Rebels and things as well as uh, uh, the alcohol? I don't, uh, think... the... I don't know well, that, that drinking... That was in the previous scene, wasn't it, I believe? Sorry. Uh, no, it's the yeah, wife's it's opening bit. Wasn't there something about? Um, I'm just checking. Riotous, yeah, riotous revels and something. I, I Taking his bed with surfeits. Yeah. So yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, so but, yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know. Drinking hasn't been explicit. And mm. This is a time, time period when everyone drinks a lot of alcohol. Yes. Um, <laughs> if you were a, if even if you didn't want to drink, you drank small beer. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but. He mentions re revelry, and the wife mentions riot, but mm. they. Yeah. But we've seen other plays where they're much more explicit about drunkenness than they are here. Yes, um, you know, the, 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 there doesn't seem to be. He doesn't seem to be, you know, three sheets to the wind um, uh, necessarily. Um, I wonder whether about the drinking thing because, just because of what happens later. Mm. when suddenly he sees reason. I mean, it's almost as though there is a, somebody, people, some people who drink a lot, they become extremely violent, extremely aggressive. Mm. And then it's almost as the play goes on, it's wearing off. Mm. Because he, to be, so, I mean, yes, he could be absolutely furious, he's lost money, but there's, it just seems that something a little bit more uh, we'll we'll let's 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 burn that bridge when when we uh, we we get a little further into the play I think but I think we've got our our, our, our starting point. Um, I have uh, Eloise is down as second gentleman. I've got Joseph as gentleman four. Um, could um, uh, who is spare? Um, coming up for the rest of this scene. It is just various gentlemen, isn't it? I will read gentleman one. And um, Simon, could you read gentleman three, please? Sure. Uh, assuming that we they say very much at all. Someone's, uh, someone's computer's making some interesting noises. Yeah, it's because mine, it's mine. I'm very sorry. It's That's just right. A, so we have um, had the imputation of ba uh, uh, bastardy on, on on his children, and that's uh, something else that the husband has uh, obviously got ticking around in his head. Um, 
on upon such thoughts enter three gentlemen hearing him so presumably actually they they entered possibly a little earlier uh, while he was doing his speedily speedily uh, speech at um anyway gentlemen number one still do these loathsome thoughts jar on your tongue yourself to stain the honour of your wife, nobly descended, those whom men call mad endanger others. But he's more than mad, that wounds himself, whose own words do proclaim scandals unjust to soil his better name. It is not fit, I pray, forsake it. Good sir, let modesty reprove you. Let honest kindness sway so much with you. Good den, I thank you, sir. How do you? Adieu. I'm glad to see you. Farewell, instructions, admonitions. And exit the gentleman. Enter a servant, servant number one, which is Simon. How now, sirrah, what would you? Only to certify you, sir, that my mistress was met by the way, by them who were sent for her up to London by her honourable uncle, your worship's late guardian. So, sir, then she is gone, and so may you be. But let, but let her look that the thing be done she wots of, or hell will stand more pleasant than her house at home. Exit servant, enter an additional gentleman, gentleman number four. Well or ill met, I care not. No, nor I. I am come with confidence to chide you. Who, me? Chide me? Do it finely, then. Let it not move me, for if thou chidest me angry, I shall strike. Strike thine own follies, for it is they deserve to be well beaten. We are now in private. There's none but thou and I. Thou art fond and peevish, an unclean rioter. Thy lands and credit lie now both sick of a consumption. I am sorry for thee. That man spends with shame that which his riches does consume his name, and such thou art. Peace. No, thou shalt hear me further. Thy fathers and forefathers were the honours, which were our country monuments, our grace. Follies in thee begin now to deface. The springtime of thy youth did fairly promise such a most fruitful summer to thy friends, it scarce could enter into men's beliefs, that such dearth should hang on thee. We that see it are sorry to believe it. In thy change this voice in all places will be heard. Thou and the devil has deceived the world. I'll not endure thee. But of all the worst, thy virtuous wife, right honourably allied, Thou hast proclaimed a strumpet. Nay, then, I know thee. Thou art her champion, thou her private friend, the party you wot on. Oh, ignoble thought. I am past my patient blood. Shall I stand idle and see my reputation touched to death? Tis galled you this, has it? No, monster. I'll prove my thoughts did only tend to virtuous love. Love of her virtues. There it goes. Base spirit, to lay thy hate upon fruitful honour of thine own bed. A fight, and the husband is hurt. Oh! Would thou yield it yet? Sir, sir, I have not done with you. I hope nor ne'er shall do. And they fight again. Have you got tricks? Are you in cunning with me? No, plain and right. He needs no cunning that for truth doth fight. And the husband falls down. Hard fortune. Am I levelled with the ground? Now, sir, you lie at my mercy. I, you slave. Alas, that hate should bring us to our grave. You see my sword's not thirsty for your life. I am sorrier for your wound than yourself. Ye you are a virtuous house. Show virtuous deeds. Tis your, not your honour, tis your folly bleeds. Much good has been expected in your life. Cancel not all men's hopes. You have a wife kind and obedient. Keep not wrongful shame on her and your posterity, nor blame your overthrow. Let only sin be sore, and by this fall rise never to fall more. And so I leave you. Exit the gentleman. Has the dog left me then, after his tooth hath left me? Oh, my heart would fain leap after him. Revenge, I say. I'm mad to be revenged. My strumpet wife, it is thy quarrel that rips thus my flesh and makes my breast spit blood. But thou shalt bleed, vanquished, got down, unable even to speak. 
Surely it is want of money makes men weak. I twas that or threw me. I'd ne'er been down else. Exit the husband and thus ends the scene. So there's an interesting question of sort of location and why these, these gentlemen, three gentlemen wander in and then the four, presumably they report to the fourth gentleman that uh, an intervention is necessary because <laughs> they seem to be worried that he's changed. Uh, as much as the wife, actually, that th this is this is a generally known thing. And what's the husband's response here? Um, I think you're a bit too close to my wife yourself, mate. Um, and there's 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 this constant paranoia. You know, we've got talking of bastard children. Um, the world's against him. He's got he's, he's lot losing money, um, and he ends up in a fight, which he 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 loses. Um, you know, he's it, losing the plot isn't he yeah he mm. really is losing it um whatever's going on in his head it's making him do these rather extreme things um you know if we go back to what the wife said he's not himself she's pretty much saying so this could also be an indication whatever's happened it's made him change and not necessarily for the best mm. yeah also, in, you know, in, in that text there, they're saying when he was a younger man, there was so much promise for him. There was so much that he could look forward to. And somehow he's managed to bugger it all up. And that's the thing <laughs> that we don't know what he has buggered up yet. Mm, mm. Even yeah, if it comes out in the written, yeah. yeah. But he, yeah. Was, he was on course to be a, you know, to have a decent life with a, a, um, with a wonderful family, wonderful wife. So mm -hmm. something definitely has gone. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, because he's it, it, the suggestion is he's married up there, isn't it? That yeah, yeah. He's the one with the money. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that he's the one squandering it, and now he's blaming her for not having more. Um, yeah. which is not an uncommon uh, narrative. Um, any additional thoughts before we crack into another short scene, scene three? Um, Simon, the serving man is effectively servant number one, sir. Okay. Okay, uh, unless there's any additional thoughts at this time. So, enter a wife in a riding suit with a serving man. Faith, mistress, if it might not be presumption in me to tell you so, for his excuse, you had small reason knowing his abuse. I grant I had, but alas, why should our faults at home be spread abroad? To tis grief enough within doors. At first sight, mine uncle could run o'er his prodigal life as perfectly as if his serious eye had numbered all his follies. Know of his mortgaged lands, his friends and bonds, himself withered with debts. And in that minute had I his added his usage and unkindness, would have confounded every thought of good. Where now? Fathering his riots on his youth, which time and tame experience will shake off. Guessing his kindness to me, as I smoothed him with all the skill I had, though his deserts are in form uglier than an unshaped bear. He's ready to prefer him to some office and place at court. A good and sure relief to all his stooping fortunes, twill he be a means, I hope, to make new league between us and redeem his virtues with his lands. I should think so, mistress. If he should not now be kind to you and love you and cherish you up, I should think the devil himself kept open house in him. I doubt not, but he will now. Freddy, leave me. I think I hear him coming. I am gone. Exit, serving man. Oh, by this good means I shall preserve my lands and free my husband out of usurer's hands. Now there is no need of sale. My uncle's kind. I hope if aught this will content his mind. Here comes my husband. Indeed, enter husband. Now are you come? Where's the money? Let's see the money. Is the rubbish sold those wise acres your lands? Why, when? The money, where is it? Pour it down, down with it, down with it. I say, pour it on the ground. Let's see it, let's see it. Good sir. Keep but in patience, and I hope shall like you well. I hope bring you better comfort than the sale of my dowry. Huh? What's that? Pray, do not fright me, sir, but vouchsafe me hearing. My uncle, glad of your kindness to me and mild usage, 
for so I made it to him, has in pity of your declining fortunes provided a place for you at court of worth and credit, which so much overjoyed me. Out on thee, filth! Over and overjoyed when I'm in torments! Oh! Thou politic whore, subtler than nine devils, was this thy journey to Nuncle, to set down the history of me, my state, and my fortunes? Shall I that dedicated myself to pleasure be now confined in service, to crouch and stand like an old man in the hands, my hat off? I that could never abide to uncover my head in the church? Base slut, this fruit bears thy complaints. Oh. Heaven knows that my complaints were praises and best words of you and your estate. Only my friends knew of our mortgage lands and were possessed of every accident before I came. If thou suspected but a plot in me to keep my dowry, all for mine own good or my poor children's, though it was suits a mother to show a natural care in their release, yet I'll forget myself to calm your blood, consume it as your pleasure counsels you. And all I wish e'en clemency affords, give me but comely looks and modest words. Money, whore, money, or I'll... He draws <laughs> his dagger. Enter a servant very hastily. What the devil now? Thy hasty news? May it please you, sir. Servant in a fear. What? May I not look upon my dagger? Speak, villain, or I will execute the point on thee. Quick, Why, short. sir, a, a, a gentleman from the university stays below to speak with you. From the university? So, university. That long word runs through me. And exit the husband. <sighs> Was ever wife so wretchedly beset? Had not this news stepped in between, the point had offered violence unto my breast. With which some women call great misery, but show but little here, would scarce be seen amongst my miseries. I may compare for wretched fortunes with all wives that are. Nothing will please him until all be nothing. He calls it slave free to be preferred, a place of credit, a based servitude. What shall become of me and my poor children? Two here. And one had nurse my pretty beggars. I see how ruin with a palsy hand begins to shake the nuncian seat to dust. The heavy weight of sorrow draws my lids over my dankish eyes. I can scarce see. Thus grief will last. It wakes and sleeps with me. Exit and close scene. Um... Now there is uh, there are a couple of uh, sort of just textual questions here about precisely when the husband spurns her, and we can work on the assumption hits or slaps in some fashion. The precise placing of that is various in every edition I've got here, actually. So uh, it makes sort of more sense that it's actually at the end of that speech rather than at the beginning of it. The out on the filth speech. Uh, this fruit bears thy complaints could be an active line. Um, that's in one edition. It's at the top of the speech in another. Um, that there's there's various uh, plays with that. Uh, according to one edition, it's a different servant who comes in uh, for the the uh, in the middle of the scene. I left it uh, as was uh, because there's no particular indication in the original script that it's supposed to be someone different. Right. Um, but those are just sort of very t textual things about what's what's going on uh, with that scene. Yeah, she's 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 gone to get some more money, and the husband just what an what what an opening gambit. I mean, ungrateful sod, I'd call him. <laughs> yeah, I think that's putting it mildly, really, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'm trying to be polite here, and yeah, not we're, we're trying to keep this PG. Um, but yeah, it's there, there's just no. Um, relenting this and uh, i don't know if anyone else is feeling this and the fact we're doing this on zoom um online it it feels so claustrophobic this play you know it, it, mm. that first scene jolly jolly nice happy jolly fun la la mm. i th i think you going back to tone you see I, I was thinking as that whole thing was going on you probably need to treat it um as it descends 
bit by bit rather than if it's just immediately heavy it's mm. that feeling that exactly everyone's everyone's got and frankly if you if you look at it despite the content which we all know the abhorrence of there are certain lines which are clearly intended to be um to make people laugh a little bit like you know, the thing about like i have a wife and i'm happy enough stuff like that that would that would make people uncomfortably laugh but i think it's all designed obviously for the moments that really uh have punch um no no pun intended that uh that that, that, that they do and i think it made me think a little bit if you play Titus Andronicus um, yeah. for for it being a straight drama, didn't say it, um, then of course you 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 have a lot of trouble. Whereas um, it, because it's so insanely out there, so you have to treat it almost as slightly farcical. I'm not saying you do that with this, but I feel it's almost like it's you'd have to do an arc where it's kind of oh it's funny, oh it's still kind of funny, oh that was a bit wrong, but it's still okay. Oh dear, here we go. I think it's interesting paralleling we've been doing Tamblay in the Great all week. Um, and that's a, a play which is very out there. It's a very outward facing world in terms of the grotesqueness and the violence that you have there. Whereas because this is a very much focused in closed in world, um, it, it has a much greater punch than, than a lot of the, the grand Grignol that we, we, we saw in that and that kind of play where there is a lot more, ironic laughter and, and dark humor to play. Um, I think you're right, there, there are lines there designed to elicit an uncomfortable laugh, mm. you know, almost yeah. despite the audience. And I think that's, that's important. And, you know, it's, the wife's trap is partly, of course, of the children. You know, yeah. the, you know what do you do? You know, she has got places she could go and if she, and she might have, have, have roots out, but you know, there's actually a, almost a logistical problem here of getting everybody out at the same time. Absolutely. And I think um, as well to add on to that, um, if you were to stage it in a modern context as well, you are literally highlighting something right now that is on the rise even more so during lockdown mm. right now. Um, if any of you have seen on the news, there's been more cases of violence and abuse actually within the enclosed home mm. this is more than relevant right now you know it's not just logistical but actually a physical trap this, in a this, way this, you know? this is this is a zoom play it really is yeah. actually um mm. in 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 that 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 moment um we're also very nearly halfway through um Come you know on. it's it's uh, it, it, this is not a long text it is not hanging about with narrative um no. so another scene can, coming coming up in a moment yes uh, additional thoughts before sorry can i just can i just say that actually it could be quite comical when she comes back because it seems to be to me to be a little bit naive to think that he would be pleased with that and it's like i've got you've got this great nine to five job and he's like are you having a laugh i'm not going to do something <laughs> like that i mean that could be quite funny mm. Mm. the gag's been set up you're absolutely right mm. yeah um, we are introduced to some additional characters here uh, coming up now because we're uh, introduced uh, to uh, the uh, the master of the college next. Um, and again, we have coming up uh, a serving man. And for the moment in this scene, I'm going to say, uh, Simon, you can retain that role as serving man, I think. Um, Sure. In theory, it could be a different servant, but uh, let's uh, let's go with the same one, and uh, and the master will be uh, will be here for a little bit, and then exit, and then return as someone completely different. So, scene four: Enter the husband with the master of the college. Please, you draw near, sir. You are exceeding welcome. That's my doubt. I feel I come not to be welcome. Yes, howsoever. It is not my fashion, sir, to dwell in long circumstance, but to be plain and effectual, therefore, to the purpose. The cause of my setting forth was piteous and lamentable. That hopeful young gentleman, your brother, whose virtues we all love dearly, through your default and unnatural negligence, lies in bond executed for your debt a prisoner, all his studies amazed, his hopes struck dead, and the pride of his youth 
muffled in these dark clouds of oppression. Mm. Oh, you have killed the towardest hope of all our university. Wherefore, without repentance and amends, expect ponderous and sudden judgments to fall grievously upon you. Your brother, a man who profited in his divine employments, might have made 10,000 souls fit for heaven. Now, by your careless course, cast in prison, which you must answer for, and assure your spirit it will come home at length. Oh, God. <sighs> Wise men think ill of you, others speak ill of you. No man loves you, nay, even those whom honesty condemns condemn you. And take this from the virtuous affection I bear your brother. Never look for prosperous hour, good thought, quiet sleeps, contented walks, nor anything that makes man perfect till you redeem him. What is your answer? How will you bestow him upon desperate misery or better hopes? I suffer till you, till I have your answer. Sir, you have much wrought with me. I feel in my soul you are, my, you are your art's master. I never had sense till now. Your syllables have cleft me. Both for your words and pains, I thank you. I cannot but acknowledge grievous wrongs done to my brother. Mighty, mighty, mighty wrongs within there. Enter a serving man. Sir, fill me a bowl of wine. Alas, poor brother bruised with an execution for my sake. Exit servant for the wine. A bruise indeed makes many a moral sore till the grave cure him. Enter with wine. Sir, I begin to you. You have chid your welcome. I could have wished it better for your sake. I pledge you, sir, to the kind man in prison. Let it be so. Now, sir, if you so please. They drink both. To spend but a few minutes in a walk about my grounds below. My man here shall attend you. I doubt not but by that time to be furnished of a sufficient answer, and therein my brother fully satisfied. Good sir, in that the angels would be pleased and the world's murmurs can't. And I should say I set forth then upon a lucky day. Exit the master and servant. O oh, thou confused man, thy pleasant sins have undone thee. Thy damnation has beggared thee. That heaven we'd say we must not sin and yet made women gives our senses way to find pleasure, which being found confounds us. Why should we know those things so much misuse us? Oh, would virtue had been forbidden. We should then have proved all virtuous, for tis our blood to love that we're forbidden. Had not drunkenness been forbidden, what man would have been a fool to a beast and zany to a swine to show tricks in the mire? What is there in three dice to make a man draw thrice three thousand acres into a compass of a round little table, and with a gentleman's palsy in the hand shake out his posterity, thieves or beggars? Tis done. I had done it in faith. Terrible, horrible misery. How well was I left? Very well. Very well. My lands showed like a full moon about me. But now the moon's in the last quarter are waning, waning. I am mad to think that moon was mine, mine and my father's, my forefathers, generations, generations. Down goes the house of us, down, down it sinks. Now is the name a beggar, begs in me, that name which Hundreds of years made this shire famous in me and my posterity runs out. In my seed, five are made miserable besides myself. My riot is now my brother's jailer, my wife's sighing, my three boys' penury, and mine own confusion. Tears his hair. Why sit my hairs upon my cursed head? 
Will not this poison scatter them? Oh, my brother's in execution among devils that stretch him and make him give. And I, in want, not able for to live, nor to redeem him. Divines and dying men may talk of hell, but in my heart her several torments dwell. Slavery and misery. Who in this case would not take up money upon his soul, pawn his salvation, live at interest? I that did ever in abundance dwell, for me to want exceeds the throes of hell. Enter his little son with a top and a scourge. What ail you, father? Are you not well? I cannot scourge my top as long as you stand, sir. You take up all the room with your wide legs. Oh, poor, you cannot make it me afeard with this. I fear no vizards nor bugbears. Husband huh? takes up the child by the skirts of his long coat in one hand and draws his dagger in the other. Up, sir. For thou hast no inheritance left. Oh, what will you do, father? I am your white boy. Thou shalt be my red boy. Take that. And strikes him. Oh, you hurt me. Father! My eldest beggar, thou shalt not live to ask an user of bread to cry at a great man's gate or follow good your honour by a coach. No, nor your brother. Tis charity to brain you. How shall I learn now my head's broke? Bleed, bleed rather than beg, beg. Stabs him. Be not thy name's disgrace. Spurn thou thy fortunes first if they be base. Come view thy second brother. Fates, my children's blood shall spin into your faces. You shall see how confidently we scorn beggary. Exits with his son. Um... That descends very, very quickly. Um, again, um, there's almost a hint of a joke at the beginning in the way the master comes on and says, to keep things short, I will now speak at length. Um, uh, and if this was a longer play, I would expect this speech to actually be, be longer. Um, but it's almost like the, the, the ghost of the joke is there, but actually the speech is itself it ends up being actually very affecting. Yeah. And it feels very modern with the way the, uh, the the husband is responding with these sounds and these noises and, you know, hints at what might be going on throughout these speeches. Um, well, he, he's he's definitely ashamed of himself. Hmm. He's ashamed yeah. of how he's um, lost his inheritance, how he's put five people into, into such dire straits. And it's this um, debauchery, and obviously from from what I'm I'm seeing there, he's a gambling addict, mm. as well as a drunkard, mm. and he's lost everything, and he is so ashamed he doesn't know how to get out of this, and his only way out, he seems to him, is through being a, a complete and utter, I won't use the word, but everyone yeah, knows yeah, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think we're not using quite a few words here. Yes. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah. But then also the whole, all this business with the serving man, which just feels like that should be done really painfully slowly. I, I don't know if that's just me, but all this exit, enter, awkward silence, pour it, drinking, pledging, because the, the, there's something about that moment that I, uh, I, I, I really find interesting as how you play that and what happened, what's going on between these two characters at that moment that you need that strange, normal domestic business of, you know, let us, let us drink and, 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 and the, the, what that implies of, uh, as they, uh, they, they pledge. Um, it's, can I say, yeah, it, oh, it's funny um, that it takes the news about his brother for him to suddenly flip his lid. Whereas you might have thought it might have been enough to have um, to lost all money at gambling and everything like to be completely in a, in a terrible way to have lost his reputation, um, but it's the, it's the brother that is the, it's the pivotal moment. Mm. Yeah. Whereas he's done terrible things before. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that's the straw, etc., and the broke. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's just a possibility, but um, maybe he's gone as far down as he can go now and realises with the loss of his brother, his brother's penury and being in prison, that he has nowhere else. He can't go any further. He's, there's nowhere further down to fall. Mm. He's there, There's a false dawn there, there that at the end of the scene with the master, there you, you hope that this man might come to his senses, that, mm. yeah, he'll probably still have to sell his wife's lands, but, you know, there's, it's, it's a false dawn, but unfortunately the moment of clarity that he has is, as, as, uh, as you earlier said, is shame. Mm. Yeah. That, um, and, and before he wasn't feeling anything but anger and desire to get back to that gambling that he loves. Mm. But now he feels shame and he, he feels, uh, rightly or wrongly, he feels that, he, that he, he's been the ruin of five other people. Mm. Um, yeah. And that the only solution is therefore, uh, rather than make his boys live poor, his first lines were, he that has no coin is damned in this world. So rather than have his boys endure that damnation, he thinks it's a perfectly sensible thing to kill them. Mm. And he's still projecting uh, outwards as well, you know, that, that, that thing that um, heaven should say we must not sin and yet made, uh, made uh, women. women. So he's still, mm. even, he's not fully uh, taking ownership of his, exactly. of, no. of, of, of his own failings. Simon, I think you were going to say something. Yeah, no, no worries. No, I was just saying, I mean, they're, they're obviously setting up the idea that there's, there's uh, a, a kind of a, a mania. Um, and then we've, we've got the addictions, we've got the different personalities, we've got what we would term possible schizophrenia, the way that you would play it. But of course, it's all setting up, uh, I won't ruin what the ending is if no one knows, but, um, but you know, setting up what is blamed um, uh, for his mental state later, which of course fits in with the way that people would think the time yes so, we yeah, do have just, the moon the moon crops up and of course we have the moon yeah the, the ideas true. of lunacy um yeah. connected with that and then we get this image of the child you know with his little top and and and, and whip to uh, mm. to to make the spinning top spin uh, it's very clear in the image it wants to present here of a you know Thanks. father and mm. son which will then be I mean, I don't know, you know, it was a famous case at the time. Would the audience know that that is coming? Or is that something of a surprise at that moment that it's going to happen then? Yeah, I, um, I think I can only go from my instinct on it, which was like, yeah. I, I thought it was all set up to not really ever go anywhere. And when I read it and it was literally stabs him, I, I genuinely actually was like, Shocked. Yeah. Shocked. Same I think that's, that's why I was saying earlier, like I think it's all built to kind of get people feeling a certain way. We were talking about the wife earlier, and then oh wow, he went there. Mm. Um, yeah. And again, you've got you know, I'm, I'm glad the elephant in the room's been addressed because literally I was horrified. I mean, I know, um, I know, I, I know at the time. The role of the male in some marriages, yes, fair enough. He was the person in charge. He was, the wife should be in the kitchen, et cetera, et cetera, looking after the kids. But then you got this. And it's like, um, what the hell just happened there? It's one thing taking it out on the wife, but when a child gets involved, oh. Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. um, it 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 really is a a, a very very powerful um thing thing to be throwing at an audience um and again is the other additional context of where is this in the the run of four um you know this is this is a you know there are potentially three other plays that go with this you know is this the end is this the beginning what are those plays mm. about um and that's uh that's a that's a very interesting uh additional question um, is, there a, is there a reason why it changes after he tears his hair I, I don't know if it's drawn in all editions it changes from kind of prose to verse um it, it seems to be and some of uh, the verse uh, some editions try harder to make some of that prose into verse and and some don't um, it, no, it seems to be designed that way by and large. Um, that there is a there is a different play around with 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 the text, um, uh, and it, it's not a very regular verse anyway. Um, it's it's a very 
and that's again i think part of the sense that there's lots of pausing and and beats and moments and um and that's why it feels very modern as dialogue it doesn't feel like we're doing a verse drama when it is in verse um it, you know that dialogue is chopping and changing um so much um so I, I think it is indicative of what's going on mentally. I think that, that that's part of it. I mean, you're right about yeah. the tearing out the hair um, as well. There's so many little stage directions. Yeah. Little hints of well, little things. I was thinking it seems like that first chunk is, is him kind of, it, the first part is him sort of interrogating himself. But then there's that moment where he just switches. It's, just, it's done. He's kind of like, no, no, I'm just going to wind myself back up again. Mm. Mm. Um. Uh, I'd love to say it's going to get better, but um, <laughs> it, 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 it's not. And actually, I, sh I, sh I should, uh, should uh, you know, state if anyone does want to dip it, uh, dip out, um, then you know, you're, you're, do not feel obliged to stay on board if you, if you, if you are feeling uh, uh, in any way triggered. Um, uh, I think it's my duty of care to to point that out. Do not feel obliged. Um, uh, but. Other, unless I hear anything, we will we will continue with scene five. Um, yeah. Though we have a maid, husband, maid, son. Um, there's only one servant currently listed there. Just check ahead. Uh, but there isn't a second servant. No, so Simon, you're the servant throughout, I believe, unless we hit a problem. Sure. Um, everybody clear and we'll go down to where it says here uh that scene six begins uh though uh i think technically um in other editions it's uh, it actually runs on but we'll stop where it says in your scripts enter a maid with a child in her arms uh, the mother by her uh the mother by her a step uh, asleep I'm, I'm pretty sure. Oh, that's a asleep. For a yes. Sleep. Oh, it is asleep. Yes, that's a good, excellent typo to pick out there. That's a straightforward typo. Sleep, sweet babe. Sorrow makes thy mother sleep. It bodes small good when heaviness falls so deep. Oh, hush, pretty boy. Thy hopes might have been better. Tis lost at dice what ancient honour won. Hard when the father plays away the son. Nothing but misery serves in this house. Or oh, ruin and desolation. Oh! Enter husband with the boy bleeding. Or give me that boy. Strives oh. with her for the child. Help! Help! Oh, alas! Murder! Murder! Are you gossiping, prating, sturdy quain? I'll break your clamour with your neck downstairs. Tumble! Tumble! Headlong. Throws her down. The surest way to charm a woman's tongue is break her neck. A politician did it. Mother. Mother. I'm killed. Mother. Huh? Who's that cried? Oh me, my children. Both, both, both. Bloody, bloody. Catches up the youngest. Strumpet, let go the boy. Let go the beggar. My sweet husband. Filth, harlot. What will you do, dear husband? Give me the bastard. Your own sweet boy. There are too many beggars. Good, my husband. Dost thou prevent me still? Oh, God. Have at his heart. Stabs at the child in her arms. <laughs> oh, my dear boy. He Brat. gets it from her. Brat, thou shalt not live to shame thy house. Oh, heaven. She's hurt and, and sinks down. And perish. Now be gone. There's whores enow and want would make thee one. Enter a lusty servant. <laughs> oh, sir, what deeds are these? Base slave, my vassal, comest thou between my fury to question me? Were you the devil, I would hold you, sir. Hold me, presumption, I'll undo thee for it. Blood, you haven't done us all, sir. Tug at thy master? Tug at a monster. Have I no power? Shall I, my slave, fetter me? Nay, then, the devil wrestles. I am thrown. No villain, now I'll tug thee, now I'll tear thee. Set quick spurs to my vassal, bruise him, trample him. So, so, 
I think thou wilt not follow me in haste. My horse stands ready saddled. Away, away now to my bratted nurse, my suckling beggar. Fates, I'll not leave you one to trample on. And there ends the scene as in the edition that we're currently looking at. Um, wow. Well, um, <laughs> Um, I mean, just a little bit of history there. When uh, the surest way to charm a woman's tongue is break her neck, uh, um, a politician did it. That is, that is actually re referencing, uh, in theory, a, uh, a, a, a suspicious death um, connected uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth. Um, in, the Earl in, of Leicester, indeed, yeah. right? Yeah, oh, Robert Dudley. Oh, and Amy, Amy Robson. That's a Dudley reference, though. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a, there's a little, you know, it's a couple of years after the Queen's died and, uh, and, and that's a reference that presumably you can get away with. Um, um, I suspect a couple of years yeah. before, would you, would you, would you necessarily make that quite so, so there? But it, otherwise it's still, it's still a line that just hits you in the face. Um, and that this is a desperate struggle. The lines are very short. It's all filled with action. Um, it's um yeah it's a, that's a, that's a, that's another bruising one um uh, robert may i make a quick request you can can someone who's got some downtime maybe look up a couple of phone numbers for domestic abuse hotlines just so that we could maybe read them out uh yeah a, a, anyone who's that's a good idea. Um, yeah that's that's a, that's a very good idea um could could <laughs> I'm doing this on a Kindle, so I'm looking at the text, so I've got internet access off my filming device, so I'll go ahead. Excellent. That's great. Um, I think that's a, that's a very, very good point. Um, I might put some additional captions on this before we go up as well. Um, yeah, I Because obviously we're, we're not live, um, so we, 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 we can do, do, some, do some things there. Um, any additional thoughts before we move, move forward? Yeah, I'm getting in in this last part there where um, the child comes in and the wife is saying, "Oh, my sweet husband! Uh, oh, what will you do, dear husband?" Does, does anyone feel that she's still got feelings for him, or is she just trying to get the the the, the child back and and save the rest of the family? I think she's <laughs> trying to get everybody back. Mm, yeah. yeah. It yeah, feels I think she's just like, trying to placate him. Mm. Yeah, it feels like she's trying to reach him, like she thinks he still can be reached somehow. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I seem to get the feeling that there, there's some, there's some latent love or something there. There is. It comes up at the end as well. No, you're you're yeah. right. Yeah, I, it's it's just part of the. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think right. I think there's kind of horrible layers of feeling going on. Yeah. Uh, you know that because she did once love him, and he was apparently once different. Um. It is uh, the the text in that short piece. It just seems incongruous with what, everything that's going on around it. Well, I, I I I don't know. I don't know that far. I mean, I think you 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 you've got options there as actors. Um, what your motivations are. Mm. Um, yeah, but I, yeah, I, I, I I I don't find that 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 one is. A, mutually exclusive um at all um i mean when he enters he's gonna look probably somewhat fearful which yeah i would suggest would would as you say give uh give the actor the motivation to mm. do as they see fit but i would assume that our husband won't just kind of step on and then change they'll be in a kind of hot blood kind of fit at this point so mm. yeah i think it's probably very true that it would be uh it would be a oh my god how do i how do i placate for me, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, right. We are we are moving ahead. We've got these uh, sort of very short false scenes in your script. So we've got a uh, scene six and a scene seven coming rapidly onto each other. They're effectively just a continuation of of the scene. Um, servant one continues, um, and uh, we need a uh, do we need a second servant? Uh, we've got both servants. So if uh, uh, Joseph and uh, and uh, Liz can uh, can do the both servants bit. That would be f uh, that would be good. We'll run through uh, to the end of uh, 
scene seven, I think. Um, okay. And see see where we are at the end of that, which is effectively the end of this 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 scene in most editions. Can I just? Sorry, I need to find it because I had a problem with my computer just uh, at that precise moment. So I'm on yeah. my phone now. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we have the return of the master uh, into this this particular scene. Lisa, uh, there are some mute issues going on. Say again. So say again, Sasha. I hear you at all. Oh, we're losing Sasha. It seems. Uh, oh, no, here we are. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, uh, literally for one brief moment, the whole chat was muted. Oh, and, I, and I did nothing. I didn't, uh, didn't see anything here. No. Uh, How weird. You hear everyone now? Yeah. 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 Everyone okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, Liz, are you uh, are you back um, on stream? Yeah. Scene six. Okay. Excellent. Right. Okay. And I'm a, a servant, right? Uh, yes. There's uh, the the um, the both servants uh, are towards the end. Uh, so it's still servant one, as far as I can tell. So that's Simon. Okay. Uh, if that makes sense. Okay. So uh, enter the master. The master meets him. How is with you, sir? Methinks you look of a distracted colour. <laughs> Aye, sir. Tis but your fancy. Please you walk in, sir, and I'll soon resolve you. I want one small part to make up the sum, and then my brother shall rest satisfied. I shall be glad to see it. Sir, I'll attend you. And exit the master. Uh, enter servant. Oh, I am scarce able to heave up myself. They so bruised me with his devilish weight and torn my flesh with his blood hasty spur. A man before of easy constitution, till now hell's power supplied to his soul's wrong. Oh, how damnation can make weak men strong. Enter the master with two servants. Oh, the most piteous deed, sir, since you came. Oh, a deadly greeting. Has he summed up these to satisfy his brother? He is another, and by the bleeding infants, the dead mother. Oh, oh. Surgeons, surgeons, she recovers life. Oh, one of his men, all faint and bloodied. Follow our murderous master, just took horse to kill his child at nurse. Oh, follow quickly. I am the readiest. It shall be my charge to raise the town upon him. Exit master and uh, various servants. Good sir, do follow him. Children. How is it with my most afflicted mistress? Why do I now recover? Why half live to see my children bleed before mine eyes? A sight able to kill a mother's breast without an executioner. What? Art thou mangled too? I, thinking to prevent what his quick mischiefs had so soon acted, came and rushed upon him. We struggled, but a fouler strength than his overthrew me with his arms. Then did me bruise me and rent my flesh and robbed me of my hair like a man mad in execution, made me unfit to rise and follow him. What is it have beguiled him of all grace? and stole away humanity from his breast, to slay his children, purpose to kill his wife, and spoil his servants. Enter two servants. Sir, Sir please, please you, you leave this most accursed place. Surgeon uh, waits within. <laughs> willing oh, well, we tried to do that in unison. <laughs> <laughs> willing to leave it. Tis guilty of sweet blood, innocent blood. Murder has took this chamber with full hands and will ne'er out as long as the house stands. And thus ends uh, that effectively extended scene. Uh, it seems the logic of what is in your script scene six is that the husband has sort of stepped through the door 
um, meets the master in a hallway or something and says, oh, no, everything's fine. Just just mm. nothing to see here. And then when the master comes back again, he discovers the scene in all its, um, it, 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 its, its horror. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a conclusion to the, uh, the various bloody acts that we've had. And the husband uh, is now on, effectively on the run. Um, any any thoughts here, or shall we uh, move forward? Just that it's important that the line a fouler strength than his is um, introducing the idea of possession. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a, which yes. is obviously important because you just, we're you talking just, about mental state. So yeah, you're t- you're talking about that. You know that that was not that was no ordinary fight. It was it was uh, something mm. something extraordinary. Mm. Um, no, that's a really good point. Yeah, and you do wonder about his mental health state at this moment in time as well. Again, it kind of makes me wonder what on earth has triggered this whole bloodbath, Mm. you know? That's what I was saying earlier, really. It's just the whole thing really seems to be about um, uh, about a depiction of of kind of mental health, but obviously how we would quantify it's very different to how it would be seen then. So... (laughs) <laughs> make a conclusion i guess mm. uh based at the end but for me it's just it's it's kind of now tying together how he can have such fits of kind of passion one way or another it's clearly a, a, a struggle that's um going to be explained in a certain way mm. yeah that's and I've... resolved mm. you um it's one of those things where you know if it wasn't real if it wasn't a true based on a true story and if it wasn't something that still happens now you'd say Mm. that's completely ridiculous and that would never ever happen no one would ever you know no one could ever do this Mm. and have this kind of a snap so quickly and then yes you realize that it is um you know it's so it's so insane it must be true Mm. Mm. um and and you know it's it it's it seems to have been written in something of, of uh of of uh of haste um, based on the accounts that they have. So it's also the question of where this relation comes to sort of sensationalist journalism and, and you know, because this isn't just because it's based on a true story doesn't mean that this uh, is always, uh, you know, that this is a wholly faithful account. Um, and that's sort of something for another forum. Uh, we're only really concerned with the interior logic of the play here. Um, yeah. So let us move on to uh, exterior scene scene eight in the script we're working from scene six in other editions uh, those watching at home uh so enter husband as being thrown off his horse and falls oh stumbling jade the spavin overtake thee the 50 disease stop thee oh i'm sorely bruised plague founder thee thou runst at ease and pleasure heart of chance to throw me now within a flight of the town, in such plain even ground's foot a man may dice up on it and throw away the meadows. Filthy beast. Follow, follow, follow. Ha! I hear sounds of men like you and cry. Up, up, and struggle to thy horse. Make on, dispatch that little beggar, and all's done. There, yeah, this way, this way. At my back? Oh, what fate have I? My limbs deny me go. My will is baited. Beggary claims a part. Oh, could I here reach to that infant's heart? Enter the master of the college, three gentlemen and others with halberds who find him. Here! Here! Yonder! Yonder! yonder. yonder. Unnatural, flinty, more than barbarous. The Scythians or the marble-hearted fates could not have acted more remorseless deeds in their relentless natures than these of thine. Was this the answer I w- I long waited on? The satisfaction of thy prisoned brother? Why, ye can have no more ons than our skins, and some of them want but flaying. Great sins have made him imprudent. Has shed so much blood that he cannot blush? Away with him. Bear him along to the justices. A gentleman of worship dwells at hand. There shall his deeds be blazed. Why, all the better. My glory tis to have my action known. I grieve for nothing but I missed of one. 
there is little of a father in that grief. Bear him away. And the scene ends. We'll move straight on, I think, to scene seven uh, or scene nine in our version. Enter a knight with two or three gentlemen. Endangered so his wife, murdered his children. So the cry comes. I'm sorry I e'er knew him, that he ever took life and natural being from such an honoured stock and fair, fair descendant till this black minute without stain or blemish. Ah, here come the men, and here enter the master of the college and the rest with the prisoner. The serpent of his house, I'm sorry for this time that I am in place of justice. Please you, sir. Do not repeat it twice, I know too much. Would it, be, would it had ne'er been thought on? Sir, I bleed for you. Your father's sorrows are alive in me. What made you show such monstrous cruelty? In a in, word, sir. In a word, sir, I've consumed all. Played away long acre, and I thought it the charitablest deed I could do to cousin beggary and knock my house on the head. Oh, in a cooler blood you will repent it. I repent now that one's left unkilled, my brat at nurse. Oh, I would full fain have weaned him. Well, I do not think but in tomorrow's judgment, the terror will sit closer to your soul when the dread thought of death remembers you. To further which, take this sad voice from me. Never was act played more unnaturally. Thank you, sir. Go lead him to the jail, where justice claims all. There must pity fail. Come, come, away with me. Exit the prisoner. Sir, you deserve the worship of your place. Would all did so. In you, the law is grace. It is my wish it should be so. Ruinous man, the desolation of his house, the blot upon his predecessor's honoured name. That man is nearest shame that is past shame. And end scene. Uh, so we had two scenes of the wheels of justice, the capturing there and, uh, and uh, his uh, sort of first arraignment, as it were. Um, uh, considering we did Tamblaine earlier, um, saying, uh, talking about Barbara Scythians uh, seems uh, yeah. very, very appropriate um, uh, in, in the text. Um, uh, any, any thoughts about the, the 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 hue and cry in the in this uh, these two scenes. Yeah, I have a thought. Mm. Um, just now uh, they were saying uh, that the knight is is uh, you know so great and so graceful in doing justice. But in the very first scene of the play, it was common knowledge how this man treats his wife, and why the hell didn't they step in earlier? <laughs> Oh, that's a really good pickup. That's an excellent pickup because um, you know again uh, how how these uh, these uh, cases uh, do not uh, not getting picked up and not being seen sympathetically because of uh, effectively uh, the the old, uh, the old boys network um, and that you know um, what what forces forces institutions into actually reacting to these things. Um, that that's a really 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 strong point. Yeah, many times it happens after the deed, doesn't it? Mm. And it actually ties oh, in. Sorry, jo jo Joseph was saying, saying. Is there a um, is there a status thing in that as well? Because uh, I don't know about um, Oliver and Salmon Company, um, but are they they're of lower status. But assuming mm. that the knight and you know with the the wife and the husband being of noble birth, they he seems to. I think it's not just it's the gentleman for and the knight both keep harking back, rather than actually talking about his wife being beaten up, they talk about, oh, the nobility of your birth, you're, you're noble, so you shouldn't be doing these things. Mm. Yes, you, you've let the side down, not what, what the hell of, you know, what, how, how uh, um, you know, the, the, the asking after the victim, uh, they're, 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 they're wondering about the, the perpetrator more. Um, yeah. That's an interest. that's a good point. Uh, sorry, Sasha, I think, was also wanting to say something. Uh, well, only in the sense that um, th there seems to be double swords going on here in the sense that in the first instance, you know, we go back to that first scene, 
in that first scene, um, everybody's talking about it very matter of factly. Now, if we look at, uh, again, you know, yeah, fair enough, I take into account, you know, um, a man technically shouldn't, actually not even technically, he shouldn't even be doing it as depicted here, you know, when they call him out. But it's almost like, as opposed to the beginning scene, the beginning scene, you know, that, as they're talking about it matter of factly, this happened all the time in society. But then here, you know, finally somebody calls him out. And mm. um, yeah, no thought given to the victim. But yeah, mm. you're quite right, the perpetrator, because the perpetrator, the men, were always given the most priority as opposed to the women. Mm. So this is a societal observation in this instance. Mm. Yeah. And, and it does go to show, because the, the, the first scene, you know, doesn't bear any explicit connection with the rest of the play. But as thematically, it's really important. Um, I, I, I think it's a difficult scene to get right, I think, but I think it is, uh, it is, it, it does have a purpose. Liz, I think, was wanting to say something. Well, I just think it's interesting where he says, in a word, sir, I have consumed all, played away Long Acre, and I thought the child of his deed I could do to Cousin Beggary and knock my house on the head. But that had happened anyway, before. He doesn't mention his brother in that bit. And it's almost though because it's almost in an underhand way, his wife didn't come back with the money. And that's, um, that is the cause of his despair because he can't <clears throat> have the money to, to gamble further. Maybe he saw that as his, his way out. Mm. I think it's, it may be a little darker than that. Again, I'm looking at this through a modern eye, but yeah. often, um, if a, when a, a man who's married to a woman and has children decides to commit suicide, uh, it's, often, it's often the case that they, will, that they will intend to also kill their families mm. or their, their dependents because they see them as an extension of themselves in some way or as, a, as yeah, part, of, part of what, the, mm. what must be destroyed, which again, this is, this is a really fucking dark place. Mm. Um, mm. And I, th I think when the master makes him feel that he has foiled his brother's hope and therefore the hope of all those that his brother might have, uh, souls that his brother might have saved, he, he's, uh, the husband in, in that scene, I think, sees that he's been the ruin of his house. The shame kicks in. What are we supposed to do rather than live in shame? We're supposed to die. Mm. So I think he kills his children as a preparation to killing himself. And I think yeah. he resolves back then to do that. It, uh, it's it's one of those uh, like heinous <laughs> honor killings um and you know, obviously there's, there's the stuff about his uh calling his children bastards and stuff about him not being uh and obviously quite clearly not being his children it's 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 absolutely with a modern eye it's it's an insane uh notion of honor well which of course the only person who's brought this honor is him well, he thought he 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 thought the children were bastards for ages, or he called them bastards. What whatever he thought, he called them bastards and did nothing. Mm. After the scene with the master, he's in a state where he thinks of it as a mercy killing, mm. so that the children will not have to live as beggars. Mm. Well, that's the the thing that I'm I'm picking up maybe from that last scene is there is it, when you've got the gentleman talking to him saying you've really changed at the moment. You could almost think, oh, well, this is a crime of desperation. But that last scene where he's saying, oh, I repent it now that one's left unkilled, it makes it seem a bit colder. And you may, you know, you might be given to believe that actually this has been planned. It's almost something he's been thinking about for a while. So, you know, premeditation versus a crime of passion. He doesn't have any compunction when his wife pleads with him at the beginning about mm. saving the children from, be from becoming beggars. At the time, it doesn't seem to touch him at all. Mm. And he's quite willing for her to go up to London and sell her jewels so that he can gamble it away. And the thing is that uh, a certain lack of consistency is perfectly reasonable um, when, uh, within this. Mm. Um, and it, to some degree, it gives actors an option for what they want to, to really play. Um, I think I think that's that's not contradictory, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. That the professed reasons why people do things are not always uh, mm. consistent, um, and uh, and there, there's 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 meat to play with there uh, in in terms of a production. 
Um, I think we should finish the text if we are prepared. Uh, so this is a, a final scene with the husband, wife, um, uh, a gentleman. Um, uh, I uh, Anyone want to go for the uh, gentleman in question? Uh, anyone not saying anything during the scene? Um, uh, Eloise, I think uh, if you you be the gentleman, I think you're you're free. Um, yeah. Excellent. So, enter husband with the officers, the master and gentleman, as going by his house. I am right against my house, seat of my ancestors. I hear my wife's alive, but much endangered. Let me entreat to speak with her before the prison gripe me. Enter his wife, brought in a chair. See, here she comes of herself. Oh, my sweet husband, my dear distressed husband, now in the hands of unrelenting laws. My greatest sorrow, my extremest bleeding, now my soul bleeds. How now, kind to me, did I not wound thee, left thee for dead? Tut, far greater wounds did my breast feel. Unkindness strikes a deeper wound than steel. You have been still unkind to me. Faith, and so I think I have. I did my murders roughly out of hand, desperate and sudden, but thou hast devised a fine way now to kill me. Thou hast given mine eyes seven wounds apiece. Now glides the devil from me, departs at every joint heaves up my nails. Oh, catch him new torments that were, near in, that were ne'er invented. Bind him one thousand more, you blessed angels, in that pit bottomless. Let him not rise to make men act unnatural tragedies, to spread into a father and in fury make him his children's executioner, murder his wife, his servants, and who not? For that man's dark when heaven is quite forgot. Oh, my repentant husband. My dear soul, whom I too much have wronged. For death I die, and for this have I longed. Thou shouldst not be assured, for these faults die. If fit the law could forgive as soon as I. What sight is yonder? Oh, our two bleeding boys laid forth upon the thresholds. Here's weight enough to make a heartstring crack. Oh, were it lawful that your pretty souls might look from heaven into your father's eyes, then should you see the penitent glasses melt and both your murders shoot upon my cheeks. But you are playing in the angels' laps and will not look on me, who, void of grace, killed you in beggary. Oh, that I might my wishes now attain, I should then wish you living were again. Though I did beg with you, which thing I feared, oh, twas the enemy mine eyes so bleared. Oh, would you could pray heaven me to forgive that will unto mine end repentant live. It makes me e'en forget all other sorrows and live apart with this. Come. Will you go? I'll kiss the blood I spilt. Then I go. My soul is bloodied. Well, may my lips be so. Farewell, dear wife. Now thou and I must part. I of thy wrongs repent me with my heart. Oh, stay. Thou shalt not go. That's but in vain. You see, it must be so. Farewell, ye bloody ashes of my boys. My punishments are their eternal joys. Let every father look into my deeds, and then their heirs may prosper while mine bleeds. More wretched am I now in this distress than former sorrows made me. Exuant husband with halberds. Oh, kind wife, be comforted. One joy is yet unmurdered. You have a boy at nurse. Your boy, your joy is in him. Dearer than all is my poor husband's life. Heaven give thy body strength, which yet is faint with much expense of blood. 
and I will kneel, sue for his life, number up all my friends to plead for pardon for my dear husband's life. Was it in man to wound so kind a creature? I'll ever praise a woman for thy sake. I must return with grief, my answer's said. I shall bring news ways heavier than the dead. Two brothers, one in bond lies overthrown, this on a deadlier execution. End play. And the last thing we talk about is uh, the two brothers. Um, it starts rhyming. Um, uh, yeah. mm throughout that scene. Um, I, I, I just had a quick scan back to see whether there was more rhyming and I'd just not noticed, but it does seem to very, very much, uh, that seems to be a stylistic thing for this, do we want to call it a reconciliation? Um, what, what do we call this scene? The husband's laying grounds for his defense. Um, <laughs> now glides the devil from me. Um, uh, so, um, I don't. I, I you could put that in a very cynical way, or or a uh, very you know uh, that's genuinely he he has come to his senses. Um, well, you can see the playwright cracking his knuckles here. Can I make the audience feel sympathy for this person who they've seen do all of these things? Mm. Um, and there's also a a question of um, what we would now know as diminished responsibility. Mm that, you know, the husband, was the husband in his right mind? Are you accountable for actions you take when you're not in your right mind? If you feel sorry for it afterwards, the, your children are just as dead who you just killed. Mm. Presumably the, I, I don't know what happened. Do you know, Robert, what happened in the story this play is based on? Uh, I assume he was hanged. Uh, I, be I believe so. I will just double check that now, but um, um, I, cause I don't want to give out that kind of um, incorrect information, but I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain, um, very, very, very uh, much so. Um, uh, but um, uh, while, while I have a little look on that. Um, um, Be because we end on sort of a cliffhanger, don't we? The wife says she'll sue for his life uh, after everything. Um, uh, after uh, he w he was indeed brought to trial, um, he refused to plead, and he was pressed to death uh, in uh, York Castle in August uh, 1605. So um, uh, he refused to plead, which is an interesting point. Um, the suggestion in one edition here is that um, that this play was written so quickly that actually it may have come out before the trial actually occurred. Um, that's what Ask. It came out before that actually. Well, happened. as a production, it may have done. Uh, it doesn't get printed for about three years, I think, um, uh, in a in a fairly bad uh, uh, version. Um, it's certainly printed in various different uh, accounts, and there are other lots of other bits of material on this play. Um, so uh, yes, you're right. It, it doesn't it doesn't go for the play itself. Does not go for what you know. Is he is he is he doomed at all? Um, you know, the, the, the trial pending. Mm. I mean, the idea of, of, you know, obviously today you couldn't do a, uh, a play like that because, um, it would be sub judice. So you couldn't write a play uh, about an incident like this before the trial verdict. Um, you could drop it immediately after the trial verdict. Um, I think it wouldn't be in the best of taste. Um, I, I, I think usually 10 years or so or, or something passes, but um, I'm trying to think of some dramatizations of particularly grisly murders that have been um, on television, but I think they tend to leave it 20, 30 years. Um, Menezes Brothers was the last, I, I, can, yeah. I can remember. I think that's a good 20 years. Um, hmm. Yeah, the, the play um, actually based on Sir Thomas More's death, I believe, was published um some time after his death as well because that was quite dramatized at the time um you know just kind of thinking of murders and everything else uh, i think it was thomas I think it's thomas more 
that was dramatized. Quite, there, there is a dramatization of uh, uh, Thomas More, but I mean that's that's quite a way way after. Yeah. Um, um, uh, yeah. Well, there's, there's there is an interlude about Thomas uh, Thomas Wolsey being dragged down to hell. We don't have it, but um, that happened not long after his uh, either downfall or death. Um, for those who've read Wolf Hall, um, so you know these things do happen um, um, for for reasons. Um, actually, let's, let's bring up the bodies in there. Um, so yeah, as 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 a genre, there there are other plays which uh, which deal with true life cases and and, and things and, and and obviously lots of broadsheets and ballads and and um, uh, broadsides and ballads and things that are are about. Um, and you could almost go meta because don't don't they at the top of the play uh, when he comes in talks about uh, you know new songs or uh, new ballads uh, in his cod piece. Um, right. And so you could almost have that they're bringing on the the the, the, the a sort of almost meta ballad about um, from London. I've heard this uh, this this tale of the tale that we're in. Um, if you wanted to go that way, mm. um, yeah, you heard about the same in the Red Barn, didn't they? Shortly mm. after. Oh Red yes, Barn. yes. We're we're inundated with the murder in the Red Barn around here um, mm. in Suffolk, in East Anglia. Um, um, any any overall thoughts about the play, rather than just the ending? Um, about what we've what we have experienced this this last uh, you know, ninety minutes, two hours. One of the things that is still intriguing me is the, is the journey of the wife going through all that, and then at the end of it, wanting to get him free, or you know, still caring for him. This is the, I just cannot get my head around this. I can't make any logical, any logic of this, why she would do this. Well, now this is where I can speak from a personal experience here, because um, the whole thing with anybody in an abused relationship, um, especially if they feel this is the only thing left for them, yeah. Um, as an option, would uh, make the gesture to leave. You know, in a, this is what happened to me anyway. Mm -hmm. About I, n a n numerous times that I remember trying to leave, ending it, and then my ex at the time used his charm and his way to come back into my life and reel me back in, and I fell for it each time. Now, whether in this play, the element happening here, um, I want, I don't really want to use my cynical eye and say that his pleading to her is manipulation again um, to reel her in, but um, but the heart of me can't help but think this is a uh, my cynical mind can't help but think this is more more just a game to reel her in. However, from the responses she gives and from his tone in the text, um, there are little indications that he is actually remorseful. And again, if we look at the, te the clues back in the text on when she says he is not himself, um, she knows this is not him. Um, so it could well be an entirely different perspective that this is a genuine forgiveness. Um, that maybe in this instance, because she knew him as somebody better before and whatever triggered him down this path, um, changed him and she knew it wasn't him. So she kind of, as again in some abusive relationships, they hold on to that little shred of hope that that person will change. And in this instance, it may well be too late. And, and the thing is, the play offers, um, you know, that the, it could have been a devilish possession and that she might accept that as yeah. as as a truthful thing and emotions are not linear uh I, I i think that's 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 the other uh thing to to aware there's there's plenty of um uh, people in in all sorts of experiences where you should be feeling one thing and you 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 still find yourself and rationally you may not understand why that is um but that still is what's going on um 
I do just have to. Uh, you know, if, if if two of your children are murdered, I I see within me anyway, and I'm I'm not talking from a um, perspective of a of a woman. I there, there would be absolutely no forgiveness in me whatsoever. End of. Okay. Um, yeah, you've got to read it in the context of the of the time, of course, and um, as a possibility, she is deemed to be so good she's almost embodying maybe a kind of a christian ideal of forgiveness then you've got a parallel of course with the devil so i, th I think that we, we could we could put our kind of modern spin on it and we should of course because that's how we make these things relevant but you've always i, I feel you, you've got to read them um in the context of the time in which we, they came out of and for me that might be what it's what the what's going on there you've got the kind of devilment and you've got the Kind yeah. of good christian forgiveness it, it is also written tale. by a man i mean i, th yeah, I think exactly. that there's that perspective as deal. well but um lots of this is very well drawn and very believable but you could make a, a strong case that um that it is a, a man having his cake and eating it mm. um, in, well, in, um in, it's in, an easy in cop out in it oh it was the devil yeah yeah um uh, just one one uh, last point I want to throw up, and uh, before we do need to start winding this up, um, nobody apart from that opening scene has a name, and mm. um, you know that again, it's that thing that feels terribly modern. You know, it feels very Brexian. Um, You know, they become almost a case study of an idea rather than than real people. Uh, when you read it off, obviously in a script, it, it, on, in on stage, it doesn't matter. Um, but it feels like an exercise when, you know, these people had names, they could have used them. They could have, but sometimes, I, I guess as in a morality play, making things more specific makes them less universal. Mm. Yeah. That, the, that these people could be any of us, and this sort of life behind closed doors is what a lot of women have to endure. Mm. Yeah. Um, Elo Eloise, oh. did you have any, uh, any, uh, any thoughts? Um, no, I was just agreeing with that, that, yeah, the universality thing, um, you know, w why was this play written? Was it written so that people would learn something? Mm. Um, and um, by, yeah, not using the character names, um, it does make it more universal. That's Rude. a really good question about, about what what we expect people to get from this play, uh, you know, or what was intended at the time even. Was it intended to just say, here's a terrible thing that happened? Or was it intended to say, look, don't be violent to your family or, or don't gamble? Or mm -hmm. what, what, what was the intended effect, I wonder? Yeah. Regarding... It's... Mm. Yeah, go Eloise. I was just gonna say, um, and I mean, it's a question that can be extended to, you know, now there is this huge surge of kind of true crime. Um, that's such a kind of fashionable thing now. Um, and it's so popular and, um, and these dramatizations of, you know, real life, um, sort of grisly murder cases. Um, and you do kind of have to question why, for, firstly, why, it's something that seems to endlessly fascinate humans and audiences. We're always, there always seems to be a market for it. We're always willing to watch or listen to stuff about grisly murders and horrible violence, um, especially when it's kind of based on a true story. And um, so is it, is it the playwright just kind of monopolizing on that or in a sensationalist, cynical way um, or, is it, yeah, uh, more of a, like a fable? Hmm. Is it the equivalent of like a, a red top, like a, like the, the star or something like that? You know, in terms of this, you won't believe what happened next kind of clickbaity sort of play. Hmm. Well, going back to the naming, it's, it's, it's probably intentionally as well. If it's written, well, it's kind of contemporaneous. Um, obviously everyone probably knew who this was about, what the story was, but of course, if you name them, then, um, that might go back to what you were saying, Robert, about being, having one eye on, on legals, you probably wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't yeah. go there. So yeah, we, we could read the universality and absolutely that's how we would see it, but, uh, it might be 
that might be the legal kind of um, nod to uh, uh, not not to not treading on anyone's toes, perhaps. I suppose it really depends on how how wealthy the family's lawyers, uh, mm. uh, the family were for the lawyers. Um, mm. uh, uh, it's, mm-hmm. uh, that's a, that's a thought. Mm. Um, any any last comments on the play um, as as we wind up and. Um, Look for any uh, if Eloise has found uh, any uh, any anything to to read well, out for us. There's brilliant. Um, well, the Gov UK um, has a list of numbers for different. Oh no, I've just closed the tab by accident. Okay, I will reopen it quickly. Um, has a list of numbers for kind of different groups. Um, and um yeah so uh for example they have a number that's specifically for men that's specifically for lgbt um uh cases but um the 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 main one the first one that they list is um the chari- the number for the charity refuge which i think um yeah um which i will find the actual number for which i yes stupidly just closed by accident well i I think what i'm probably going to do especially as we we potentially have an international audience is i'll put together a uh, a closing uh, slide or something uh to to close this off before i release this uh, and maybe saying at the top as well Um, It's it's the it's the national domestic abuse helpline which is refuge which is well it is 0808-2000-247. Excellent. We will, we will put something in place uh, when this yeah. goes out. Uh, an excellent thought. Thank, thank you for that. Um, and another thing just to quickly add, because this is a very intense play, um, obviously, if, you, if any of you guys out there who are listening or watching are affected by any of the issues, don't st- suffer in silence reach out for help there are people who are prepared to enable your escape and uh, on that uh, on that note um i i think i should thank all the the readers uh, of this uh, uh relevant uh play um for their work this evening um and uh, that will be us signing off uh, for this particular episode thank you very much everyone and good night Good night. Good night.